your sweet spot? In what kinds of businesses do you like to invest? Um, so we are really early stage investors. I mean, I think we've always uh, been most excited about getting involved uh, with the entrepreneurs at the earliest stages possible. And so good. Kind of, you know, helping to uh, really form the idea um, and help them recruit the nucleus that that will create the management team. So we really invest as early as we feel comfortable. Fantastic. And is there any particular theme that you guys are more interested in than than others? I think we're uh, really interested in opportunities to disrupt big segments of the economy. Great. Right? Leveraging technology and uh, innovative business models. And it doesn't have to be uh, entirely newly invented technology. It could be ad yeah. adopting or applying technology that's been around for a little while, but coming up with a novel approach or a novel business model that allows you to put a combination together that's disruptive. Brilliant, brilliant. And so there's no particular industries that you guys focus on. It's just more those that piece, the um, early stage and um, the disruption that you like. No, I think you know that's that's really a philosophy, and okay. we'll look at any industry, uh, providing that it's large and uh, and that uh, there's a plan that could result in building a big company that that would be uh, valued highly. Yeah, brilliant. Make lots of money. <laughs> I, never, uh, I never thought I'd say this out loud, but I actually even find the insurance industry industry interesting these days. So. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So there's lots of possibilities out there. If that's possible, then anything's possible. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, what percentage of women startups do you get pitches for and what percentage have you funded? Uh I, we don't really keep those statistics, although we probably should. Uh, okay. But uh, I, we have funded a fair number of, of uh, businesses that have been started by women or women teams right. um, over the years. And I don't know if that's, you know, because we do a, a fair amount of investing in Europe. Um, but we've probably funded uh, a dozen or so, possibly more, businesses that have been started by women. And in terms of whether or not that's a higher hit rate, uh, uh, you know, based on ones that are pitched by men or pitched by women, I have to assume it's a higher hit rate because we don't see that many businesses pitched by women. Um, and okay. So we've done that many, probably means on 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 balance it is a higher hit rate. Wow, that's great. H have you noticed any differences with women entrepreneurs and how they pitch and build businesses? Uh, I. You know, I, I don't think that... Because um, we're getting into that area of uh, generalization, I know. It's a yeah, little bit well, touchy. <laughs> generalization, and, and I, I frankly think that the, the, the variability between among women uh, is as great as the variability between men and women. So That's I neat. I don't think I've seen any particular uh, bias one way, one way or another. Well, that's brilliant. Um, I've been told that venture capitalists fund people similar to them, white, male, etc. What's your take on this? And if this is happening, how can women startups find an opening in this culture? And I, I was based in uh, London and Ireland for many years, so um, I did note that there was a little bit of bias. Obviously not with your firm, um, and it's well known that, that you don't have bias. But... Um, with poss possibly with other funders, and I just wondered if you've got any ideas about that. You know that people fund people that are similar to them. I don't. I don't. Well, I think you know the venture capital industry is a, is uh, is is fairly large at this point. There's a lot of different people uh, mm. you could be talking about or talking to, um, but I don't think the good investors uh, try to fund people who are like them. Um, in fact. Um, you know, if, if what you say uh, is true, then I don't know who's funding all of the uh, the guys from Southeast Asia who are going to Silicon Valley and starting businesses. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're certainly not, uh, don't fit the, the, the mold that, that you, uh, you talked about. I think people, 
I think an, an strong investors will look at somebody's background, uh, their their uh, track record, uh, their vision, and their ability to lead a team and and carry carry out the vision. Um, right. Really pay much attention to, uh, you know, whether whether they come from the same background. In fact, I think diversity is is always a benefit. Um, so that's going to bring additional strengths to the company. Uh, it will help them draw on a broader pool to, to build their team. Um, it'll give them access to a broader network to uh, sell their product into um, and ultimately to exit their business. So I don't see how restricting uh, the, the, the scope of people you fund can help in any way. Yes, and uh, Eileen Lee from Kleiner Perkins uh, just recently wrote an, uh, a post on TechCrunch about the market for, of women and how great that market is, like how huge it is. And uh, I would imagine, as you said, with diversity, having women on your team is definitely going to mean you're going to have an insight into that market. So, well, you know, we I mean, sometimes people forget that uh, half of the half of the customer base out there is women. In fact, yeah. <laughs> more than half because, you know, many products are, uh, are, 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 the purchasing decisions are made essentially by women. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, um, you know, you may want to understand that. You may want to mm -hmm. have some people on your team who understand that. Uh, yeah. Second yeah. market. Thank you. Thank you. That's great encouragement. Uh, do you think that networking with venture capitalists is harder for women entrepreneurs? Um, again, particularly in Europe, obviously, it isn't so hard over here. But I think probably the biggest problem and, and uh, uh, pro possibly the, the, the only problem is that there aren't enough uh, women in uh, technical and engineering and scientific tracks. Uh, okay. And I think that given that we invest in lots of technology companies, many of the uh, founders and members of the founding team come from that background. And if it's predominantly a male uh, uh, source, then yes. by the sheer numbers, we're going to see more uh, male entrepreneurs. Uh, and so we'll end up funding more of them. Yes, it's yes. Really, It's, it's really a, a supply problem. Yes. Uh, I don't see any obstacle to women uh, you know, getting in front of us with a, with a great idea. Great. So really, a, a lot of people do say that, that it, it starts really young, as in, you know, children and, and encouraging women to, to, or girls to study technical subjects. Yeah? That's right. Um, do you think that women need to have their business developed before they can achieve funding? Because I have had feedback from some VCs that, you know, women sort of need to either be technical or need to have their business developed to prove uh, that they can do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know why that would apply more to women than, than to men. Um, you know, there are, there are uh, some businesses uh, and in some cases some entrepreneurs where you'll, uh, you'll only be comfortable if they have significant prior experience and there are some spaces yes. where you're willing to back, you know, a couple of kids out of, out of university or, you know, yes. out of a graduate program yeah. um, with no prior experience, but, you know, a lot of vision and, uh, and, and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of promise and mm. belief that they're scalable. And I don't, again, I don't see that that is any different for whether they're men or women. It's really obvious you've got no bias, Neil, because even the question almost was a curly one for you. Thank you. Um, often advice for sourcing ventures equated with dating, and my background's in the online dating industry, so I'm interested in this question, implying that there's a matching that needs to happen with entrepreneur and investor. Have you noted a general psychological profile of venture capitalists and also of entrepreneurs that promotes the attraction and synergy between them to develop a great startup? I think that um, confidence is is uh, the fundamental currency of these decisions. Whether right. you know, and it and it really cuts both ways. I think the entrepreneur has to have a lot of confidence in the investor that they're letting uh, into their company, and, and that they're ultimately forming a very uh, important partnership with. 
and Thank the you. investor has to feel that way about the entrepreneur and that and that's again like dating or like really like a marriage uh, yes you have to be able to look at each other and feel like no matter what comes you're going to be able to face it and you may have arguments and you may have disagreements but you're going to end up convincing uh one of you will end up convincing the other um or you'll both be in agreement to begin with of, you know what the right thing to do is yes and you'll and you'll uh face whatever challenges and you know this is somebody that you'd like to go into battle with and yes. i think that applies for again for for any entrepreneur i don't think it's any different for for men or for women but i do think that um that is probably the single hardest thing for any entrepreneur to convince uh an experienced investor of yes Lots yes of people can come in with uh with interesting ideas um you know big markets yes nice demos um but uh, but the real question is uh you know given that i know that things will not go as planned and that's you know that's really a given yes is this somebody that you're willing to get into that kind of trouble with and are you confident that you'll be able to um get get through those uh challenges and prevail uh you know in a very productive way Yes. And are and actually are you going to enjoy doing that because you know you you uh life is short and you you prefer to do this with teams that you're going to enjoy spending lots and lots of time with. Yes. And that's a that's a key uh fundamental uh question. And I think yeah, chemistry has a lot to do with that. Um the approach that somebody takes in a conversation, how straightforward they are and whether or not they're um the type that shares risk and talks about risk. and says hey this is the biggest challenge that i'm facing um i have a couple of ideas of how i might deal with it um but what are your ideas rather than uh a different approach would be to sort of dress everything up and conceal risk and hope that the investor uh only figures out that that risk exists you know when it's when it's too late and they're down <laughs> yeah so authenticity and and building trust is what i'm hearing a very important and the that that there's a human connection between the investor and the entrepreneur. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. In the dance with an entrepreneur both in the decision making process of funding a startup and then in working with those startups, what are the necessary qualities that make a good venture capitalist? And some of the talents that VCs have mentioned to me is, you know, would you trust your gut instincts and feelings that happen within the relationship with the entrepreneur as signs about what's happening in the business or the startup? or would you manage by influence or persuasion and obviously this is more when things are not going as planned as you just mentioned how do you get your point across i you know again i think um you want to have the kind of dialogue and relationship um that that you would have you know in in a personal relationship uh, yes. i i mean i this may this may be uh very different to what you hear from some other folks but i yes I, there's there's kind of no room for formality or politics very or, good or protocol i think in uh in a discussion between partners and you know we don't see ourselves as anything other than just another partner in the business wow and this is the kind of this is the kind of stuff that gets in the way um at the larger companies and and the incumbents yes that, you know our companies are trying to uh run circles around. So if we get caught up in the same kind of stuff, you know, we're not going to do very well. Um, yes. We really need to have just a very direct uh open discussion. There should be uh nothing that you can't say to each other. Um you can criticize the business uh as harshly as you need to to make a point. Um if that if that's genuine and it shouldn't be seen as uh an attack on somebody's value as a person and it shouldn't affect the relationship in the same way that you know two brothers or 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 two sisters can really say anything to each other but there's that yes. kind of un- underlying trust and uh respect uh, yes. and love uh, yes. that you know uh protects protects them and allows them to just communicate very effectively i think you really need to aspire to that same kind of channel between wow. partners um in a business uh whether they're founders or a founder and investor. Yes, because you're working so closely together for a long time, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Neil. It's been um, really, really valuable to hear your feedback about this issue. And I really appreciate that you've taken the time out of your busy schedule. My pleasure. Thanks for giving me the opportunity.